Hello, Abdul. How are you doing? You're the first one in. Can you hear me okay? Uh, just, I don't know, comment one if you can. Uh, first of all, um, thanks for the, the question. Uh, if you can just confirm that there's no issues with the mic, you can hear me okay. Uh, if you just comment comment that you can hear me just to make sure. I don't want to be talking to myself. Okay, good, good. Okay, so first, um, <laughs> well, I want to I want to make it clear that this isn't um, so this ask me anything session live session isn't about um, drop shipping in general. It's about what we do sourcing branding fulfillment in China. So anything relating to logistics, if you want to brand your product, um, you know, shipping transit times, uh, the process and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'll seeing as though you're the first question, I'll <laughs> I'll try and answer that, Abdul. But it's not, you know, I can't I can't really as as I'm not a dropshipper myself, I can't um, answer that as well as someone like you know Camille Satar who does who does dropshipping on a daily basis and is is experienced in that field, but. I mean, I can only answer that from um, as an owner of a fulfillment company in China, and I can't see any changes at all. Really, it's the same same thing. Um, of course, there there are more challenges, and it becomes becomes more competitive. But that's that's with any um, that's with any kind of business model, and it's it's, it's, it's there's no. There's, there's not much difference. It's not like it's going to die anytime soon or there's going to be any major major impacts or changes. So, for example, you know, if I use the, the most recent uh, change, UK uh, VAT, um, you know, everyone was, was uh, worried about their profit margins and stuff like this. But it honestly doesn't make much of a difference because most dropshippers are going to ignore that anyway and they're still not going to pay VAT. So... Yeah, in short, um, still, you know, if you're if you're a talented uh, marketer um, or you have an advantage uh, in the uh, online space, e-commerce or whatever it is, you would have an advantage. Whereas if you don't know anything about uh, selling online or marketing or anything, it's going to be much more difficult for you. Um, my question is close to transit time to the US. Um, recently, uh, it seems to have improved from from like a month or two ago. And we're seeing by Unit Express to the US, we're seeing something like um, you know, 11, 12, uh, 12 days on, on average, something like that. So as long as you use a decent service, uh, that's what you can expect. It's, it's, after Chinese New Year, there is going to be some delay uh, due to you know everyone coming back, uh, all, all the companies and fulfillment, uh, the suppliers, manufacturers, and logistics companies coming back after their holiday. There's going to be a backlog that they need to go through, so expect that average transit time to um, increase by a few days. Uh, you know, I can't say for sure. Maybe it's going to be. There's going to be like a three day delay or maybe six day delay. We don't know. Uh, Bill, uh, thank you for joining and asking this question. There are, uh, when you say sh shipping options to, to Ghana, is that bulk freight or is it drop shipping? Um, so you've got, you've got cross border e commerce parcels, which are small parcels, usually within two kilograms, or are you, 
do you want like a big bulk shipment in a container or a pallet sent to Ghana? I mean, there, there are both, but um, the freight will be more common. Um, I mean, we've, we've never, we've never sent to Ghana um, by freight or about bulk freight or uh, cross border e-commerce. So um, I can, I mean, I know there are services available because we, we have access to them and we can see them. And we can use them, of course. It's just that we've never really had anyone follow through uh, or ask any quotes for shipments to Ghana. So you're probably the first, Bill. So how many? So far we've only we've got 10, um, 10 viewers. We were supposed to start at three, so that's literally like two minutes ago. So we'll wait wait a bit longer, see if anyone else joins. Um, if not, you know, feel free to those who are in the live, uh, feel free to ask any question you may have. If there's going to be a, a long period of inactivity, we'll just end the live call. Um, you know, I don't want to just be sitting here looking at myself. Okay, uh, do, do, do. the next question is, I'll do this in, in, in queue, order of queue. So after Bill, there was Dragan, hopefully I'm, or Dragan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sorry if I'm not. Um, how branding product and creative, creating logo? Okay, so when you when you're talking about uh, branding and you know printing or engraving your logo, it depends on the product. So if you um, it depends on if the product is uh, cost effective to brand, then for example, if it's like a POD product such as clothing, then you won't need such a high MOQ. Um, so an example would be if you wanted to. Um, print your logo on this jumper then that's you can do it you know you can only you, you can order one jumper and print your logo on it uh, although there's obviously differences when you say logo it could be you want the actual stitching at the back um, the label to be branded that's going to be something different um, and, and the MOQ is probably going to be something like 300 you would have to order a 300 sweaters um, for them to brand it and you know uh, time wise it could be anything from five to 15 days uh, these are very rough rough figures by the way so if it's if you're talking about like electronic products or um, gadgets and st stuff like that then it, you're looking at a higher order volume so you're probably looking at a thousand plus to brand or white label your product um bill pallet okay yeah so that can be done um i don't know what the the rate is off the top of my head for so, so with with freight bulk freights um it you get you get pricing tiers so you have uh you know if you send between 50 and 100 kilograms it would be you know example would be twenty dollars per kg if you do 100 to 500 kilograms it will be um you know 15 dollars per kg if it's a thousand a ton plus it will be cheaper you get my point so i mean if, you, if you're interested in a quote then you can send a message on the page um but it also varies and it depends on product so if you're sending a uh, a liquid product or a powder product or uh you know a sensitive product they are usually more expensive per kg than a general product. So um, yeah, if you, if you wanted more info, uh, just shoot us a message and we'll uh, get a quote for you. Uh, next is Martin Godek. Thank you for joining and asking the question. What is the best way to ship from China to the UK in bulk? Um, it depends what it depends what your goal is. Do you want the best value do you want the, the fastest shipment i mean if you're looking for best value then it will be via um c uh, c freight um you can do rail as well but it's not as cost effective 
and time shipping time wise it's about the same uh, off the top of my head it costs something like again depending on how much weight you send and what product you send you're looking at around four dollars per kilogram uh, so depending on how heavy your product is and, and how much you're sending that's what you can expect to pay roughly and yeah you know we can we can help with that uh, we have partner freight forwarders um, and we can do the sourcing as well so if, if that is something you were interested in or wanted to do or just wanted the quote again you can drop us a message and we'll put pricing together for you Alan Vuong um, if in a, an AliExpress supplier ships to the USA in 9 to 14 days but I decide to use you guys to fulfill my orders how much quicker would delivery time be uh, um the thing is, is if we have inventory, if we have the product in stock at our warehouse, then uh, okay, it depends which service you use. If, if we use Unixpress as, as an example, then it's probably going to be similar, to be honest. There's not much, not going to be much difference. The advantage that you have, so let me get something uh, straight and I'll try and be as um, clear as possible. If you are currently working with an AliExpress vendor, and they are a very efficient and reliable vendor and they have stock of the product you're selling, then there would be no reason whatsoever for you to go to another uh, vendor or an, a use an agent or fulfillment company um, because it defeats the purpose. What They've already have stock of that item. Uh, whether they're a wholesaler or manufacturer or supplier, they already have that item. So you don't have to purchase in advance you don't have to um, use your own the, your own money to purchase inventory and as soon as you pay them for that order they would hopefully process within 24 hours and that's a sign of them being a, a good uh, efficient and reliable vendor that has inventory for that product the only reason you would switch and go to another agent or supplier would be if you start selling other products uh, where you have to start sourcing from different vendors on AliExpress, uh, then that way it would make sense for you to use a uh, fulfillment company like us, for example, who would consolidate all of your orders in one parcel, uh, source it from those particular suppliers and get it sent to your customer. So your customer is only going to receive one parcel and you'll be saving in shipping because you're putting it all in one parcel. I uh, hope, hope that answered your question, Alan. If it didn't, um, feel free to ask another. Uh, Bill, so how does the shipping work? Because I want to start a business through China. Um, not sure how to answer that question. The way the, the normal process is you would you would contact us and ask us to source a product so you should know what it is that you want to sell first off uh, and you can provide us a url you can provide us with a product url it doesn't matter it, it can be anything it can be an amazon the alibaba aliexpress or google whatever uh, it could be any url as long as the it's clear what product we need to source it has the the details of the product the, the images the description we know exactly what it is to source we would then um, we would also need to know the quantity that you want to send, uh, you want to, to send to Ghana, and then what we'll do is give you a quote based on the product and the quantity. Um, if you are happy with that quote, we would raise an invoice and you would make payment for, for the products and the shipping to Ghana. And then that's when, the, once we receive your payment, that's when the process starts. We would place the order with the supplier, uh, we would um, inspect it to make sure that it's the quantity is correct and we'll we will spot check like you know 20 to 30 percent of the inventory to make sure that the quality um, is and there's no there's no damage or or issues with the items themselves and once we're once we're content and happy and uh, we'll just pack it all up for international shipping and that's when it would go to the freight forwarder and they would put it on the you know, 
whether it's a cargo plane, whichever service you go for, or a, a, a sea, a sea freight, whatever service, and they will send it from there. I don't know what the transit times are to Ghana from China. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be about 30 to 40 days or something like that. Um, if Amit, how are you doing? Uh, if I have a product doing 50, 30 to 60 orders a day, could you source stocks from other suppliers or factories in the Chinese New Year as right now all factories are closed? Uh, we can, we can. Okay, so we are off from the 11th until the 17th. So although there will be um, some staff working during Chinese New Year for uh, in, in the procurement team, uh, and they will still be generating quotes for customers that request uh, quotations. So yes, we can have a look around. We can search to see if any suppliers are uh, working during Chinese New Year, although it's very unlikely. Even if we do, we have to try and find a courier that's still working. And even if we do, um, that has to be delivered to us and the offices are closed. So, and even if we do <laughs> uh, open up just for that day to accept the shipment, we're not going to be sending any shipments out uh, during Chinese New Year. Uh, but we will be out to on the 18th of February when we're back. So if you are lucky enough that we can find a supplier before uh, the 10th, um, we can get it in stock and we can pack it up until the 10th. Um, uh, and then once we return on the 18th, we can continue packing as normal. But it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to find a solution um, between the 10th and the 17th. Even if you do, um, it's unlikely. It's, it's not, it's not going to go out, get out of China because, I mean, I think the only international carrier that will be sending items out or parcels out is China Post, an e-packet. Um, and even them, even they will have uh, two or three days off. So, um, you know, I, I would recommend you either make it very clear on your website for your customers that they're not going to be sent out or just, um, you know, pause your ads or something. Hope, hopefully that answers your question, Amit. You're welcome, Alan. Hopefully it, it answered your question. Uh, Martin Goddick, can I trademark products without registering um i'm not <laughs> i'm not qualified to answer that question uh it's probably best you speak to a professional in that in trademarking to to um answer that question unfortunately uh, and sell them with tm logo on it yeah i mean with my my very limited knowledge um about you know, copywriting and trademarking and stuff like that. Um, there's nothing, I mean, you can physically do that. You can, and you can stamp a, whatever logo or, or sign on your product that you like, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's actually trademarked or registered. If I'm not sure if that answers your question. Uh, so, you know, if, for example, if you, if you're, if you've seen like a, a crowdfunding Indiegogo campaign, of a new product and it hasn't launched yet, but you somehow you somehow get your hands on on that product and send it to China and, and rip it and replicate it and decide to and decide to put a TM logo or something like that on there. That's not gonna that's not gonna safeguard you <laughs> from the um, copyright owners or trademark owners. Uh, hopefully that's answered your question. But again, you know, sorry, I can't answer that in detail because I'm. I'm not qualified in that area. Dominic Dragoon, what's the minimum order number you're working with? And since I'm working with Instagram influencers, it might not have, for example, 30 orders a day, but I have much more, uh, but only on the days when I have collaborations. Is it possible for me to work with you? We'll, <clears throat> we'll also need branding. Sorry, that's all right, no problem. Um, in short, unfortunately not. We need, so our MOQ is 10 orders a day uh, for dropshipping uh, consistently. And that's the very, that's the bare minimum. 
Um, we do. I mean, if we don't get me wrong, if our if they if we have customers and clients already and they want to, you know, test the waters and do stuff like that, we do uh, we do help them out. But for new clients that are onboarding, we need to see um, consistent numbers before we can onboard. So, I mean, what I would suggest is, in your case, um, you can, you know, run a few influencer campaigns first, uh, get some data, you know, run it a few times to, to prove that you 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 have the ability to to sell um, sell products regardless of how how you're selling them however whichever marketing method you're using and if we can see you know you've you've generated a few orders here and there every every so often um yeah then we can you know we can consider taking you on that's not a problem um uh, mick cohen you're welcome no problem martin you're welcome alan wong what is an erp system and is it important for a supplier to use it so in layman terms, an ERP system just allows um, everything to be automated, or well, not everything, most things to be automated, and it's just much more efficient. So an example would be most, most Chinese uh, agents and fulfillment companies would use an ERP called Dian Xiaomi, which basically just syncs with your Shopify or WooCommerce or whatever platform you're using. It syncs with that with your store, which sorry um which then um pulls all the data through so the fulfillment company or agent would be able to see all of your orders the the address um of your customers you know what they've ordered the skus and all that stuff so they won't have to rely on csvs and um imports and exports and you know that there's there's a lot of room for error when you're dealing and you're working that way so an erp eliminates all of that because it's all automated it's synced through api uh, connections and and not only that it's two way so you know once they've packed um packed the the parcels they would then and, and they've dispatched it that would then be pushed the tracking numbers would be pushed to um to your shopify store and it will be marked as dispatch and then your customers will receive the dispatch confirmation so that's the very basics of it but there's also lots of other advantages to erps to to, to just uh, make everything as efficient as possible um kirill kirill kirillov uh hopefully i said that right i'm struggling today with names uh hey buddy curious what's the best way to connect with you in regards to an opportunity for honest performance and a software that we have developed that would be a great addition to all of your shopify merchants you are working with appreciate your support and time it depends what the software is we, we've 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 developed our own in-house software erp um so at the moment we're using dn xiaomi which is the third party erp but um, we've been developing our own replacement for that. Uh, so it's almost been in development for two years. Uh, it's in beta at the moment. So, uh, I mean, unless I don't know what it is that your your software offers, but if it if it's going to be of benefit to us and uh, our clients, then of course we can. Um, have a chat and, and see uh you know if we can somehow integrate it with our in-house uh software i mean you know as you know if you're technical and you understand the basics of apis and stuff like that then most things are can be integrated so yeah i mean send me a, an email um at admin at uh, honestfulfillment.com uh, and if it's something of interest, we can arrange a call and discuss it further. Uh, Alan, thank again for your answer. You made it very interesting. <laughs> so, so is it safe to give a supplier a guest account to my Shopify store? Um, I wouldn't. Um, they don't need to have a. I mean, 
the way the way we operate, even with the third party ERP, is you would you would download the ERP because it's available on the Shopify App Store. So you can download it, install it. It will be on your Shopify App Store, um, and then your then what would happen is your agent or fulfillment company would register a new account on the online um, DN Xiaomi platform. They then have to sync that with your store. They have to connect it together. And the only way to connect that together is to log into that new online DN Xiaomi account and then um, sync it with your store. So they would have to put your your store.myshopify.com URL and then it will redirect to uh, your Shopify login. So they would need to have a staff account for app permission um, only. They don't need anything else. As long as you install the app first, the, the, the third party app, then all they need is app permission. So, so yes, you will need to create a staff account for them, but limited. Don't, don't give full permission. It's, it's not necessary. Only app permission. Not saying that if you did give full permission, they would do something uh, <laughs> unexpected. Um, it's just that it's not necessary. And I mean, you don't really want to be giving anyone full permission anyway. Uh, try rush. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I can leave it there, it's not a problem, unless you specifically want me to delete it. But I'll check that out later, uh, Kirill, thank you. Do And do all of your clients give you a guest account for their Shopify store to fulfill orders? No, so um, only for the install, only for the, the ERP install uh, and connection. Once it's connected, the account can be deleted. It's not. It's. It doesn't need to be um, there indefinitely. So it's only for the in the connection of the ERP, and then you can delete the store account. Um, so as long as, just to be clear, as long as the app is still installed on your Shopify store, um, and you don't, it doesn't matter if you remove the staff account. There's no. There's no connection between the staff account and the, the app. So just leave the app. Once everything's connected and synced and sorted, just make sure the app is um, still installed. If you did remove it, then the obviously the sync will be gone. So they will no longer be able to see orders. They will no longer be able to push tracking numbers to your Shopify store. Um, uh, also, while I'm on, on that, um, and if we see it quite often, is that say, for example, you're using a fulfillment company who uses that third party ERP, the same ERP. So let's let's use uh, DN Xiaomi as an example. Say you've installed it, you've started using an, an agent, and for some reason you wanna you wanna switch to a different agent because, you know, regardless whether it's regardless of the reason, whether it's because they weren't as good as you expected or they've can't source the product or whatever. When you go to a new agent and they also use the same ERP, um, there's going to be a conflict because you can only that ERP um, is it registers your Shopify URL on the DN Xiaomi system. So you can't duplicate it. So you can't another agent can't create register another account and enter your Shopify URL, there'll be a conflict, it will say this already exists. Um, in that case, what you need to do is contact your original agent to say, please delete your Shopify URL from the system, from, from their account. Once they do that, then the other agent can sync the store. Um, so it's best to try and, you know, end relationships on good terms, try not to May, you know, hopefully it's not a bitter one. Otherwise, you know, they, they have you in their hand and, and you won't be able to, you won't be able to uh, use that ERP with another agent unless they remove it. So if they, if they really wanted to be spiteful, 
they, they just would leave it on their account indefinitely. Um, and then there's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. Um, okay, so that's th almost 30 minutes gone. Um, I'll hang around for another five minutes to see if there are any more any more questions. Um, if there's five if there's five minutes of inactivity, uh, we'll end end this live session, and um, you know we can do another one in the future if if necessary. You're welcome, Alan. No problem. Uh, while I'm waiting for the next question, I'll check out this software, Try Rush. Uh, real time, okay. Dragon. Okay, let, what was your question again? Let me have a look. Dragon, what's the minimum order? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, no, that's not you. Drug on drugs. Where were you? Ah, um, branding and logo. Uh, yeah, no, it was just um, saying that depending on the product, it could be anything from, you know, one item up up to like 5,000 minimum order quantity. So it, if, it's a, if it's a product that requires high MOQ, on average, you're looking at between one to 2,000 units that you need to pay up front for um, before that you can start, before they can start branding that product. Uh, so it, it really, really depends. Um, you know, if you wanted to know, if you wanted to find out exactly you know the time the moq and the cost then best to provide us with like a product url the the item you have that you're thinking of branding and then we'll contact the necessary uh, manufacturers and our wholesalers and ask them what the moq is and the cost as well as the production time that's the only way you're going to get an accurate answer otherwise it's it varies varies a lot I mean, I'll, I'll give you a very quick example, as I mentioned before, if you are branding a, a shirt, a t-shirt or clothing piece of clothing like this, then because it's a, you can find POD print on demand supplies, uh, you know, you can order a single unit. But if you wanted to uh, replace the tag, the clothing tag at the back, then typically you're looking at about a minimum order quantity of 300 units. And that's per SKU. So if you change the color or the size, then you would need to order 300 each of those, not not mixed. Um, you know, you can't order 100 large, 100 small, 100 medium. Uh, it would be MOQ per per SKU. Hopefully you heard that, Dragon, and that answered your question. If not, um, you know, feel free to replay this video once it finishes. Thomas, how are you doing, bud? Is there any problem with shipping to the UK? My parcel always stuck for over three months so far. Uh, no. What's the, how? Which method did you use? And do you have a tracking number? I'll be able to have a quick look and let you know. But it sounds like it's probably lost.
Alan. <laughs> I think you're asking the most questions. I like it. Uh, will suppliers use my customer information for their own benefit? And how to how do I protect the data that is shown to them? Good question. Uh, I can't say if they will. Uh, it's just like me saying, you know, will they steal my product? You know, will they try and open their Shopify store and drop ship it themselves? You know, is a possibility. a possibility. Nothing from stopping them. And then this is where trust comes into into play. Um, I actually had a story heard a story of uh, it was actually an old client of ours they came to us because somebody in the, their old fulfillment company member of staff ripped their um, everything that the entire funnel from start to finish and then um, when they found out obviously they they uh, stopped working with that fulfillment company but I feel quite bad because it probably wasn't you know the management or the fulfillment company themselves probably wasn't aware of it it was just one staff member who who just took the risk uh, on their own back and um, tried to do it on their own uh, and that sucks but yeah I mean regardless of whether the fulfillment company knew or not and it was just the act of an individual person it doesn't it doesn't instill trust uh, and that relationships obviously gone to come to crap <laughs> so yeah there's nothing you can do uh, nothing you can do to to um, protect that data because especially if you're if, if you're working via ERP all of that stuff is is pulled through anyway um, if you're I mean they're gonna need the name and address and potentially the contact number in order to fulfill the orders anyway uh, if you're referring more to like emails and stuff like that then yeah I think I think there are some things you can do such as so when you install an app uh, usually it will tell you um, what permissions you have or what permissions you want to allow it's kind of like installing a, a new app on your phone like Android or possibly even even uh, Apple where it, you know before you install the app it will say it will be using your microphone, it will be using your contacts, it will be using this, that and the other. So if there is that option when you're installing the, the app, the ERP, then that's probably your only option. Otherwise, no, nothing you can do. Um, but, I mean, the typical Chinese agent or fulfillment company or supply, whatever you want to call them, they, they can't, there's nothing... They can't really benefit from getting that data. It's not like you selling it to, you know, if, if it's some, if it's a company that sells sells data in exchange for, well, exchanges data in exchange for something else, whether that's whether that's uh, monetary means or anything else, then that's when you're you're gonna need to need to worry. Um, so you know when you sign up for regardless of, of what you're purchasing or you're signing up to online if you buy new car insurance or home insurance or if you if you purchase a new phone contract or anything like that most of them sell your data on anyway you just have to check the, the, the small print uh, the fine print so um, it's cut is when you start dealing with in, international um, when you start dealing with international uh, data, it's I guess it's less valuable. Uh, the only reason you know insurance companies and, and these kind of companies sell on your data is because they have a lot of details and information about you. They know your age. They know uh, exactly where you live. They know your usually they know your buying habits. Uh, they know what car you have and all that stuff. So it's much more valuable to them and they can sell your your email address or contact information much more uh, than in comparison to a random Chinese business having contact details of lots of random people internationally with with no uh, no data on them whatsoever they don't know how old they are they don't know what their buying habits are they don't know you know 
the where they live is that was that their is that their home address or is that just a delivery address there's lots of lots of different um i mean in in short you know i wouldn't really, wouldn't really worry about it hopefully that answers your question um try again no problem you're welcome so yeah thomas um yeah if you the only way i can i can help answer that question is if you uh provide a tracking number i'll um, right understand thanks again is there any way i can save this video you're drop shipping too many gems i need to keep referring but yeah I, I mean what i'll do is i'll this should be a, a permanent video on the page uh, this is actually the first time i'm doing a facebook live so i'm not not exactly sure but um if if it can be saved i'll, I'll upload it on our youtube channel so you can review it as and as and when you like but yeah i'm glad it's been of some use to you so far uh, hopefully we can do more in the future and hopefully there will be more viewers and attendees uh, so far we only have nine um and there's been a handful of people but not as many as i originally hoped uh, so, uh, in about five minutes, I'll end this live unless there are any more questions. Uh, not sure if um, if you're still here, Kirill. If you are, I might as well ask you a question, actually. Uh, how long did it take you to develop, develop TriRush? He's probably gone, but might as well ask on the off chance. Oh, cool. Yeah, so how long did it take you to develop that software, Kirill? And is that is that what you do? You're a you're a developer or? There's a there's a free plug for Curio. Everyone can take note, download it, try it out. No affiliation. First time I'm hearing about this software, and I'm not going to get paid. No problem if you don't want to disclose any information, that's fine. I completely understand, Kirill. Just out of interest, that was all. And to try and keep this live going a little bit longer to give others a chance to join and ask questions. Cool, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, we're um, one thing I did I have have been considering uh, because a lot of the uh, the development so far for our in-house software is predominantly. Cool. It's predominantly um, just uh, surrounding. It's just an ER piece, but to, for the benefit of our back end and our clients. But eventually, I would like to integrate lots of different features as well as have options such as you know branded tracking page and stuff like that. And one option would be to either develop it our own or to speed things up, kind of, you know, get in contact with somebody like you, and as an example, and you know, you white label it. We, we, you white label the software to us, and then we'll just pay you some kind of royalty fee or something like that. 
Uh, Alan, are you, you're back again. <laughs> Do you know why on AliExpress it mostly states standard shipping, but all all supplier I talk to talk with state they do not express. Um, AliExpress standard shipping actually can mean anything. Um, some so some uh, some vendors, if you pay for AliExpress standard shipping, they would use. Uh, you know, Express, UBI, Yanwen, 4PX, it, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like open game. Some use ePacket. Um, so it doesn't, you, you really don't know what you're going to get when you use, uh, to pay for standard shipping. Um, there's no, there's no kind of set, set service. So you could get a really good service, quick and efficient, or you could get a really crap one. Unix Express isn't stated because that particular vendor hasn't signed up for you know express uh, they they don't have the option they've never used them they haven't created an account uh well, nothing is impossible okay cool yeah it'd be interesting to to talk about that Kirill. yes please do uh, just send me an email and we'll take it from there <laughs> no props yeah we'll save it don't worry uh, unless something goes wrong. Okay, we still have six six viewers. You guys are dropping out. <laughs> I think it's going to be time to end this thing. What's uh, what's everyone doing on this um, lovely Sunday? It's currently snowing outside in in the UK. Where are you guys from? Okay, five more viewers. Right, I think we can uh, wrap this up. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any more questions, and there are only five uh, five live attendees. So I'll um, try and upload this to YouTube. Whoever wants to to view it again, feel free to. And until next time, hopefully we can uh, have another another live. But thanks everyone that, that joined and asked some great questions and see you next time. See you guys. Have a, have a lovely Sunday.